Governor Charlie Baker today extended the closures for all non-essential businesses for one more day through Monday to allow for his advisory board to submit its plan for a phased reopening. People need to take this thing seriously. They need to respect it and they need to understand that we've got to find a way to help people get back to work. I think everybody knows that and we've got to do it in a way that we believe respects the virus and make sure that we don't create a second outbreak. We want to do it in a way that's cautious enough so that we actually move forward and have the ability to sustain it. Of course, it's been a long and painful haul for businesses anxiously awaiting the plan for reopening, and none more so than on the Cape, where merchants do the vast majority of their business in the summer months. It's a long, cold winter and spring for scallopers off Cape Cod and a rugged business any time of the year. Scallopers like these have been working these last few months, but they've got limited buyers. Only a handful of restaurants are open for curbside business, so scallopers are themselves selling pierside. Meanwhile, other businesses have been shuttered completely. The summers really are bread and butter for us. Sophia Mercheris of the Silver Seahorse in Hyannis says she's hoping for good news come Monday, but is wary. As far as opening, it's changing all the time, mm -hmm. and we're happy to comply. But for now, these Chamber of Commerce videos are only wishful thinking. They promise boating, beaching, bucolic views, and dining by seaside. But right now, the only dining is curbside. In Chatham, the historic Chatham Bars Inn has been shuttered as well. The luxury seaside resort offers hotel rooms, private beachfront houses, cabana beach setups, a porch full of furniture, and three restaurants, not to mention a bustling wedding enterprise. It's all been on hold. And joining me now are Gary Thulander, Managing Director of the Chatham Bars Inn, Claire Adams, who co-owns the Salty Market in Truro with her husband, and State Senator Julian Sear, who represents the Cape and Islands. Welcome to all of you. So I'm going to start with Thank the you. big picture, go to the middle picture, and then the smaller business picture. So uh, starting with you, uh, Senator Sear, I mean, it's a simple question. Is the Cape ready to open come next Tuesday or Wednesday? So I don't actually think we'll be... Um uh, if you listen to the governor and, and to the recommendations and advice that's been coming out, um, this is not going to be like turning on a light switch. So uh, I don't think the Cape or any part of the Commonwealth will be able to sort of open, uh, you know, on Tuesday or Wednesday next week. What we're looking at is a cautious phase in reopening. Uh, my hope is that we are going to be ready as a region uh, to meet those phases, uh, starting with phase one and phase two and mm. phase three, all the way to phase four is when we have a vaccine. Um, but I, I think that I uh, want to have some echo the governor here. I think he's right mm. uh, to have some caution uh, that this is going to be a phased in approach. And it has to be to protect public health. And frankly, it has to be to protect economic vitality as well. Mm -hmm. So, Gary, uh, you've been closed since uh, the end of March, and normally the inn is open at least part-time all year round. You've lost a ton of business with weddings and, of course, your weekenders, and now the uh, season is starting. What are you going to do? You, usually you hire a lot of foreign people to, to help out with um, staffing. What do you, what do you do? What changes have you made? Well, we're, we are ready. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been shuttered since uh, March 22nd. Um, and we're following the governor's, governor's uh, de declaration, obviously. But we have a detailed plan, and uh, I believe a lot of the hotel industry is ready also. Um, but um, we, are, we are actually uh, looking at hiring more U.S. Uh, uh, citizens, as we always do. Uh, we're reducing our foreign workers, um, so almost 75% uh, will be down. And um, we're looking to, there's a really pent up demand to come to the Cape and the destination down here. So we're looking forward to a reasonable summer, uh, a little bit down from last year, but looking for some uh, demand uh, that's pent up uh, from the last uh, couple of months here. I'm sure. So, Claire, your place has actually been open. You've had to limit some things. Your, your deli was shut down. But how, how have you managed your restaurant? Well, uh, certainly, uh, thank you for having me, by the way. <laughs> Uh, we are excited to be open, but it looks a lot different being open than it looked just in the planning phases. You know, it's one thing to put down a set of guidelines and it's another to be uh, doing them ourselves. From our staff's point of view, it's a lot of new systems, um, a very uh, vigilant on sanitary stuff, obviously, but also just an entirely new online system. 
uh, curbside pickup, technical stuff that, you know, we just never had done as a small place that really valued our customer service as our, as our main feature. So um, now that we're open, it's a lot scarier. So do you see. plan to have seating inside or are you going to go outside? What are you going to do? Right now we have no, uh, no one can come in the building except yeah. for people who work there. So we're just doing curbside and delivery. We've stopped doing our, our made to order food at the deli because it helps um, minimize the rushes at breakfast and lunch. And that way we can really mm -hmm. uh, make sure to be safe. Once we decided safety is our priority, then it kind of made everything a lot simpler. We can mm -hmm. just realize that this might not be the busy summer season that we're used yeah. to, and we can find a way to just make it through this and, and come out the other side so that we can have a great next season. That's mm -hmm. really our goal now. So, Senator, right now, the last time I went to the Cape was like a couple of weeks ago. I, I blasted down for a weekend. Um, there were signs mm -hmm. when you came over that said, if you're not a Massachusetts re resident, you have to um, – quarantine yourself for two weeks. First of all, is that realistic? And are those signs still up? I mean, people are going to start coming for um, Memorial Day weekend. They're not going to be in quarantine. So so those are the rules of the, the road, Emily, uh, under well, good Governor luck. Baker's order through May, <laughs> through May, through, through May 18th. Yeah. Um, but, but really, what, what's important here, right, is that we are speaking with a, un, with a uniform message to um, anyone who's here, to the public. So first and foremost, our year-round residents, and now our seasonal visitors, actually. I think a lot of where economic activity is going to come from, our season's going to come from, is people who are spending the season, maybe spending more time than they usually would here because, um, you know, they're working from home. Uh, they're able to do that here on the Cape. Um, but whatever the precautions that the governor is going to put in place, whatever those rules on the, of the road are, um, we are ready we formed a Cape Cod Reopening Task Force. It's a partnership between our legislative delegation, the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, Barnesville County, with participation from Cape Cod Healthcare, municipalities, uh, the Cape Cod National Seashore, a few other stakeholders, to make sure that whatever the rules of the road are, we're getting mm. out a uniform message. I think what's most important is that people know what are the health and safety precautions they need to take to keep themselves and their families safe and to keep everyone else safe. If we can do that, if we get adherence to that, I think that's the best hope that we have for, for some sort of season, although I, mm. I think we do have yeah. to be honest that it will be a muted season. Well, Gary, on that point, on, on a muted season, I mean, a lot of your business it, it, are those beautiful, lavish weddings that take place at the inn. <laughs> and, right. and, and, of course, the, 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 the poolside, people are shoulder to shoulder there and in the cabanas. I mean, are you still going to have a wedding season? Have you had to cancel that or have you scaling them back or are you working with the, your customers to, to, to change that? What are you doing? Good, good question, Emily. But what we're trying to do is working with all our, our, our brides and grooms uh, uh, that had planned their weddings for the spring and, and early summer here and uh, finding new dates for them. Uh, yeah. A lot of them moved, moved to the fall or moved later into the summer, and some have moved over to 2021. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's a service that we want to provide with them. Um, it's a very important moment for them in their life, and we want to make sure it's uh, as less stressful as possible. Will you have but, any weddings there this summer, do you think? Uh, we're planning on having weddings if we're allowed to have uh, a, a large number of grouping and events. So mm -hmm. we'll follow the governor's uh, direction, um, uh, as everyone else will. But uh, we would love to have the weddings here just like any other hotel or inn. And just to, your, your other question about uh, cabanas and people being so close, um, uh, in reference to the restaurant dining experiences, we have we've redone all of our floor plans and we've reduced wow. our seating capacity. So there is new floor plans in every single restaurant inside and outside uh, with social distancing in mind for our employee safety and all for, for our guests. And we're still planning on providing that wonderful uh, dining experience they're expecting. All right. And with the pool and the beach, uh, the same thing. Um, there will be social distancing, with the chaise lounges on the beach, I'll be able to floor plan already set up so everyone has their distancing and be very comfortable. So be, it, it should be pretty seamless with our plan. All right. we'll, we'll adjust as we go from there. And I assume, Claire, you're gonna do the same thing. Eventually you're gonna to have to open your door. People wanna come into a restaurant. So you'll do that with some kind of cautionary approach to it. Absolutely, we really look forward to opening our doors fully, but certainly at least uh, opening our kitchen back up yeah. and doing what we do. Um, we just want to make sure that, you know, whether it's worst case scenario or best case scenario, since we don't know, since we have so many questions, that we just have something that can be really workable going forward for now and then um, hopefully be expanding as soon as we can, as yeah. soon as it feels like it'll be safe for uh, right. our staff 
for us in our community. And I know that the customers are ready. So Carrie Thielander, Claire Adams, and Senator Julian Sear, thanks so much for joining me.